The Marine Corps says its personnel system is overdue for a fundamental redesign. Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps Troy Black is the highest ranking enlisted Marine, selected by the Commandant as his advisor. Sergeant Major, welcome to the program. Good morning, thank you. So let's talk about the plan to redesign the personnel system, uh, Talent Management 2030. What are those new skills and characteristics that you're looking for now? So a couple of things about Talent Management 2030. The first one is, uh, as it was written in Force Design 2030, the system we have now is a little bit outdated. Um, modernized systems allow us to use algorithms to better place the right Marines in the right job. So we're looking, first of all, to revamp the literally the IT and the systems. So we can identify skills and traits that Marines have and make sure we have a better idea of how to place them. Your second part of your question was, what are the sort of new skills we're looking for? Um, the world is getting to become a little bit more technical, so we're looking for those skills. We have several tests, actually, that we do on the recruiting side that sort of test whether or not someone outside just the ASVAB score, their AFQT score, whether they have these additional skills. Cyber tests, uh, we do an, well, a series of bank of tests that try to, to figure out what the other skills are. Yeah. But how do you know what uh, the skills that you're going to be needing for a future conflict are? I think it's pretty clear. I mean, I think sometimes we don't appreciate the skills we already have. I've got children still in high school. Actually, one just started college and one's in high school. Those that can do this, this is probably the world that we live in now, right? You and I grew up in maybe a different world. So we already have a sort of a set, set, set of skills that are already needed. The world is more digital. We use systems as much as we use our, just our, our physical presence on the battlefield now. So we're looking for those technical skills. The plan calls for a Marine, quote, with a higher level of operational experience. That's right. What does that mean and, and why? So experience you can't replace just with training. You have to have a combination of the training and the education. And then how many what we would call reps and sets of that do you, do you have? How many times have you practiced it? Even more importantly, Marines that deploy and come back with operational experience, we want to make sure we can retain more of those Marines. That's additional experience to re-educate and retrain to just continue to compound that experience. Well, that's what I was going to ask you because you're, you're no longer deployed. There's, America's not at war right now. So how do you adjust your training in order to get that experience? Yeah, we may not be at war, but I, I, I use the following analogy about the Marine Corps. We're a service of four-thirds. One third of the Marine Corps is deployed, one third just got back, one third's getting ready to, to train to go, and the rest of us in supporting establishment, that fourth third, are getting ready to get orders to one of those other three organizations. There's 30,000 plus Marines forward deployed and forward stationed right now, so we are, we are constantly deployed, maybe not specifically to combat operations, but we're constantly deployed. Let's talk about retention, because retention. the Marine Corps met its retention goal uh, for fiscal 2022. This is the first time in 10 years. So why do you think that was? What changes had to, ha to happen to, to meet that goal? Yeah, a couple of things. I think re rebalancing the Marine Corps' retention and accession programs have been helpful, and we'll talk about that, I think, in a moment. Uh, the Commandant additionally has uh, gone out and done a Commandant's reenlistment program, really trying to find ways to incentivize the top talent and get them to stay in the Marine Corps. Additionally, there's a lot of efforts that have been going on with the talent management sort of systems I was talking to you about before. The force knows that, and they're looking for other opportunities and better ways to, to actually take charge of and be responsible for their skills and how they get assigned. Well, you said incentivize top talent. What kind of incentives? Give me an idea of what you were offering. Really simple for the Marine Corps. One of the biggest challenges we have is, uh, with, that, with the systems being outdated, it's a very long, process in time. So the longer someone has to wait for a decision from the headquarters whether or not they're going to be re-enlisted, the more difficult it is for them to think about what's my next step in my future. Uh, part of the Commandant's retention program turned that process from weeks into a matter of a couple of days. So being able to get someone who's energized now to stay and get them approved immediately, that's been beneficial. And it's still early days for fiscal 2023, but how are things looking? Any changes that, are, that you're going to put, put in place? We continue to see the propensity for wanting to be retained or stay in the Marine Corps continue to rise, which is, which is good. I think sometimes we have to understand we have a very deep talent pool, and the more ways we can ask Marines, what would it take to keep you, rather than you just stay, you know, kind of like give the, the, the sort of knife hand we're doing in the Marine Corps, is finding ways that they think is important for them to be able to stay. Watching the war in Ukraine continue to unfold, I wonder what have you learned from the failures of Russia's um, military with regard to their force structure? Now, I'm always cautious to try to find out too many lessons learned, like 
because this is still an ongoing conflict. We might Your find observations, some yeah, let's put observations. it that way. What isn't known is, and there's been several reports on this, I won't speak too much about the Russians other than I'll speak about the Ukrainians. Their, their development of their non-commissioned officers has been pivotal, meaning that middle management leadership, the ones who have that training, education, and the repetitions and experience has turned into be the real success on the battlefield. That's, that's, their, enlisted, that's their enlisted management. I wonder if there's any of those observations that have influenced your thinking about Force Design 2030 at all. Have, has it reinforced what, what's in that document? Any, anything that you would want to change? Yeah, um, talent management 2030 is not about finding uh, new talent, it's about retaining talent, how to better manage that talent. Non-commissioned officers are the backbone of the Marine Corps. We've said that for, for decades, that's been, the, that's been our, our motto. Being able to retain those NCOs, to retrain, re-educate, retain that experience, we see that on the battlefield right now in Europe. What do you think is the biggest challenge in achieving all those retention goals? Transparency sometimes is a, is a challenging thing for us. There's needs of the Marine Corps and there's how much play that the individual has in their career path. Uh, I will tell you, I've had the career path that I mostly desired to have. but. It's not as transparent how you explain that to Marines and how they can be involved in that process. I think the more we can be transparent, offer them opportunities that they can choose a little bit more rather than just be told, that's very helpful and that has a big impact on our retention. Sergeant Major, uh, the Defense Department's latest uh, sexual assault and prevention report says that 13.4% of women in the Marine Corps experienced unwanted sexual contact. Why is that happening? What are you doing about it? Yeah, first of all, sexual assault is a crime and it should be treated as such. And the, you may be well aware the Secretary of Defense, when he came in the seat, uh, went, put us on a program to do an independent review commission to find out what we could do different, identify different methods to be able to address sexual harassment and sexual assault. The IRC, we call it, came out with a number of recommendations. And first, the Marine Corps complying with and will continue to comply with all of those recommendations. So that's one of the things that we're doing. We continue to address sexual harassment, sexual assault through training, education. We do vignettes, individual training. We teach leaders how to identify, and we teach individuals how to report. Most importantly, we focus on making sure that victims of sexual assault are taken care of based upon whatever their needs are once they have a, uh, either harassment or some sort of bona fide, uh, legitimate uh, reported sexual assault. The, the marine culture is very unique. It's ingrained in every new recruit. Is this a problem with the culture itself that needs to change? I say culture, no. And there's been a lot of arguing about culture, but I, I focus more on subcultures. There's nothing in the Marine Corps culture that's written that says, you know, do, do bad behaviors. In fact, it's quite the opposite. But there are pockets and there are individuals of subcultures that operate inside the, our, our greater culture that, that either continue to think that these are proper behaviors, don't properly identify what's right and wrong, which sometimes is the case, and then there's other cases where some individuals just ignore it. We, we call those people who don't want in our ranks any longer. The Marine Corps Force Design 2030 calls mm. for certain legacy systems to be phased out, tanks, certain aircraft. That means that certain military specialties will also be phased out. So what's your plan to retrain all those Marines? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, and just as an opening statement on that one, the Marine Corps and all the services always get rid of old things and they develop new things. I'm a great case. When I first uh, enlisted in the Marine Corps, I was going to be on a reserve contract to be a Hawk Missile System Specialist. There have not been Hawk Missile Systems in the Marine Corps almost since the day that I came into the Marine Corps. So I got out of that contract and, and been in the infantry. So we always change. Retraining those Marines uh, is very simple. Those Marines are offered an opportunity to do what's called a lateral move pick an, uh, an opportunity of their choice if it's an open MOS and they can move right in those MOSs and just get retrained. So what are your thoughts on taking advantage of the highly skilled reserve Marines mm. that you would have in your ranks? Our reserve Marines are phenomenal. I, I was in a group of uh, reserve Marines just this past week up in Wisconsin. It was amazing to see Marines of you know varying pay grades not knowing what their civilian occupations were. A couple of E3s and E4s in that group were like CEOs of their own private businesses, which were like very successful businesses. So you have to understand the talent pool. Um, one of the things we've done is create an innovation unit that's going to be stationed in, in, uh, in New York 
and they're going to take a bunch of these reserve Marines with a greater capacity for thinking and sort of look at the technical advances we need to have in the U.S. Marine Corps, and they're going to work as a workshop inside this innovation group. So we're going to try to harness some of their natural abilities in their, in, their, in their other environment. Tell me more, this is the Marine Innovation Unit. That's correct. When was it created? What are you expecting to get out of it exactly? Over the last probably year, a year and a half, we've looked for opportunities to take and, and reinforce and enhance what our reserve Marines bring to advancing where we're going in our Marine Corps. And like I mentioned previously, we have a vast amount of experience in the reserve for, force. We forget they're not just Marines, right? They do all kinds of things. So trying to bring in those, those really critical thinking individuals who are working mostly in the tech fields as part of their civilian job and figure out how we can take our weapon systems, our operating systems, our planning systems, modernize them to really get after being able to operate better in, in combat. Sergeant Major, Force Design 2030 also calls for stronger in a, uh, integration with the Navy. Tell me how you're interacting with your counterpart in the Navy. Yeah, in, integrating in the Navy is not something new to the Marine Corps or the Navy. The fact is after two decades of being able to pretty much operate separate, uh, the Marine Corps was required in mass to go do other things ashore. But Marines like me, I was on a Marine Expeditionary Unit two or three times during this period of time. So it isn't like the Marine Corps and Navy haven't been operating together, but the primary strategic role of our maritime force, the Navy and the Marine Corps, not so reinforced. That's where we're going right now. Uh, I've been very close with both the previous Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy and the newly appointed uh, Chief Hone, Hone uh, as he's come into his role as the MCPON, and I look forward to continuing that relationship. And what about with the other services? Are you working with your counterparts? Is there something that you, you try to get out of that relationship? Yeah, it, the, the, the U.S. military will not for, fight as independent services. It's a joint force. And our senior enlisted advisor to the chairman, our SEAC, uh, He's brought together all of the service senior enlisted and all of our combatant command senior enlisted leaders together quarterly. And we come together and we talk about what's going on in the joint force. How can we better facilitate the leadership and the development of the troops that, that are distributed around the world? If I asked you what your number one priority will be for fiscal 2023, what would you say? People. In what way? Well, I think sometimes when we look at how we develop the Joint Force, but the Marine Corps, all the services struggle with resourcing the proper priorities. There is no system, there's no machine that's going to win on the battlefield. It's the Marines, in my case, that win on the battlefield. So as we invest in one of three things, either these systems we talk about to better harness their talent and manage their talent, um, I got to be frank, the base pay scale for enlisted needs to be addressed. Needs to be addressed. Um, if we have Enlisted members, based upon their base pay that qualify for welfare and food stamps, I would tell you that the base pay scale for enlisted is probably needs to, needs to get a review. That's huge. And the third thing is continue to invest in families. Families are people too. Uh, we have a motto. We say we recruit a Marine, but we retain a family. we got to find the mechanisms to better and harness and bring together holistically all that resources we have to, to help our families as well. All right, Sergeant Major Black, nice to talk to you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.